We're continuing with our problem solving for bomb problems using various formulas. We're going to do a modified version of problem 7.10 from the second edition of Kelson in this video. We will be finding the yield on a bond in kind of an unusual way by first finding the base amount of the bond to ultimately get the yield. Then we will also check the answer with another, another formula. Neither of these is the typical way to find the yield because oftentimes you have to use the built-in financial functions on a financial calculator to find the yield. Here's the problem. We've got a thousand dollar par value bond. Uh, so this is the face amount. It's in your bond. We don't know n. Maybe that won't matter. It's maturing at par, so the redemption amount C is the same as the face value. It's got $100 annual coupons, not semi-annual, but annual. So our rates will be as an annualized rate. It's purchased for a purchase price of $1,110. That is the value of P. We're told that K is 450. K is the redemption value, is the present value, the redemption value. It equals C times V sub J to the N and it equals 450. The goal is to find the yield in two ways, two unusual ways, by first using the base amount formula to find capital G, which is called the base amount, and then secondly, part B in some other unspecified way that seems most convenient, but we will not use built-in financial functions on the calculator. All right, what was the base amount formula? It said that the price, P, is capital G, which is the base amount, plus the difference C minus capital G times V to the N, or V sub J to the N if you prefer. That is the base amount formula. We know what C is. If you think about it, we can figure out what V to the N is. We could use that to find capital G. How is that helpful? Well, capital G is very intimately related with the yield. Here again as an annualized effective rate. Capital G times the yield is equal to the coupon amount F times R, which is 100 here. So once we have capital G from this, then we'll be able to solve for J, the yield rate. All right, so it's a matter of just plugging and chugging here. So let's see, the purchase price was $1,110. I won't bother with the dollar symbols. Base amount is unknown, G. Redemption value is 1,000. V to the N, we have to figure out what that is. Again, K, which is 450, equals C times V to the N, which is, since C is 1,000, 1,000 times V sub J to the N. So V sub J to the N is 450 divided by 1,000, which would be 0.45. So we can plug that in here. And this is going to give us a linear equation that we can solve for G. Let's expand this out here. It's capital G plus 0.45 times 1,000 is 450. We also have a minus 0.45 times capital G. Let's combine the G term, subtract 450 from both sides. Just so I don't make a mistake, let's use the calculator. We get 660 equals uh, 0.55 times capital G. Uh, divide everything by 0.55. Looks like capital G is 1,200. Technically speaking, that's in dollars, but don't worry about it. Now we can, again, use the quality up here to find the answer. J, the effective annual yield rate in this case, is going to be 100 divided by capital G, 100 divided by 1,200, same as 1 12th, and if you convert that to a decimal, that is 0 0.083 repeating. Yes. All right, so about 8.3% is the yield rate. So with these givens, the base amount formula is certainly fairly convenient to figure out the yield rate. What other way could be used here? Um, well, we know C, we know K, we know G, little g, the modified coupon rate is the same as R, the um, actual coupon rate, because in general, C times little g is F times R. And so since C and F are the same, that implies 1,000 little g equals 1,000 little r. G, again, is called the modified coupon rate. G equals R. 
which if you think about it here is got to be 10% because F was 1,000. R is 100 divided by 1,000. That will be 1 tenth or 0.1 or 10%. Based on this knowledge, perhaps it's easiest to use Makem's formula for the price. Makem's formula says that P equals K, the redemption of the present value, the redemption amount, plus little g over j, and this is the same as little r in this case, times the difference, capital C minus capital K. We know everything here except little j. We can solve for little j. Plug things in. P is 1110. K was 450. Little g is 0.1. C is 1000. K again is 450. That's 550, so this becomes 450 plus 55 over J. Subtract 450 from both sides. 660 is 55 over J. So J should be 55 over 660. Everything is divisible by 11 to give you 5. Um, let's see, what would it be? Over 60 which is the same as 1 12th, which is the same answer as before. Okay, so that would be another fairly convenient way to find the effective annual yield rate here. These coupons are annual coupons. Okay, thanks for watching.